The 20th century is a time when we begin to think about black people in Britain, but we tend to think about them after 1948, 1948 being the year that the Empire Windrush came to Britain, bringing 500 people from the Caribbean to fill labor shortages. However, in the 1930s in Britain, there was a very thriving intellectual arts community that included people like Ronald Moody the sculptor. It included people like Paul Robeson, who was the singer from America. Uh, and it included people like Una Marzen. Una Marzen was a playwright and a poet. She produced um, in 1932 the first all-black production on the British stage uh, of her play At What a Price. And she came over to Britain, like many people from the colonies, to find better uh, publishing and um, uh, broadcasting opportunities in the Metropole. So when she came over, she worked for the League of Colored People, which was run by um, Ronald Moody's brother, Harold Moody. And she was involved through that with many uh, local ladies groups and also through uh, with local government uh, initiatives. And she broadcast for the BBC. So she was a multi-talented woman. And while she was here in Britain, she befriended a woman called Stella Mead. Uh, and Stella Mead was somebody who helped Una Marzen get some of her poems published. Uh, Stella Mead was a writer and a storyteller. She read her stories on the BBC as well. Uh, and one of the poems that they published uh, of Una Marzen's through Stella Mead's press, uh, the University of London Press, was uh, Little Brown Girl, which talked about the loneliness of being brown in London's white, white city. Um, and it is from the perspective of white people asking this little brown girl why she's there, what she wants, where she really belongs. All questions that are still asked of black people today. And it was important that Unimarzen used a child because the child is very vulnerable. And a lot of black people felt that way in Britain in the 1930s. Now, although Stella Mead helped Unimarzen get published, it wasn't a one-way friendship because Stella Mead's children's stories before she met Una Marzen were very much uh, traditional folk tales in the sense that they were um, set in the jungle, in the bush, when she was talking about African children. And um, they, they weren't, yes, they bordered on racism. Um, but after she met Marzen, the stories that she wrote changed, and they changed not entirely. Uh, you have the stories of Peter and Tess who go around the world uh, in their father's private plane without regard to visas or cost or anything like that. But when they do stop in the Caribbean, they don't see people in the bush any longer, people in the jungle. They see a modern Caribbean. They see a Caribbean that has been transformed by industry and with which has professional people who had been trained at the university. And this kind of change was maybe slight in some ways. You still had the ultra-rich uh, British children who were able to go everywhere around the world. But you also began to see the Caribbean in a new light, and that was really important. Now, Una Marzen never published any children's books in Britain, but when she went back to Jamaica after World War II, she started a press of her own. She became an independent publisher uh, with the Jamaica Gleaner, which was the major, is still the major um, newspaper in Jamaica. And she had some very um, key considerations that she wanted uh, within her press. And one of those was that it should be 
black authors writing for black children. So when she published Anansi stories, for example, she published those not by Philip Sherlock, who was the uh, chancellor of the University of West Indies and who had published Anansi stories before, but was white. She published the stories of Louise Bennett, also known as Miss Lou, who would later um, go on to be a, a well-known storyteller, but who wrote in Patois. And so she wanted to consider the language of Jamaican children. Now, as part of the, the press, she also started a book club uh, so that kids would buy the books that she was publishing. And one of the kids who came to that book club was a, a young man named Andrew Salky. And Salky would go on to make a very similar journey to Una Marsden, leaving for the Metropole in the, of London in the 1960s to find better opportunities for publishing because he too was a writer. And he became a writer through reading the Pioneer Press books that Una Marsden had published. When he went over, um, he became part of the growing independent publishing industry in Britain. So Una Marzin, uh, even though she never uh, published books of her own for children, had a huge effect on children's literature and also was part of the black British scene long before Windrush. <laughs>